Hello everybody! Welcome to another Valheim video. Today I'm going to be showing you how to plan an epic endgame base building experience in Valheim. I'll also show you a really amazing spot that I wish I could use, but unfortunately I play without portals and I can't. And I'm going to show it to you at the end of the video. But before I do this, there's a few things that I need to make clear. During this video, I'll be regularly referring to this Valheim map tool here because I believe that you can use this to have really awesome adventures in a way that you're really unlikely to experience if you just play the game regularly. No bashing on it though at all, trust me. I think that the game is beautiful whether you use this tool or not. But here's how you can really use the tool and have an absolute blast. Everything you're about to see is on the seed Rito, R-I-I-T-O. This is the seed that I'll, I recommend and I'll continue to use until Ashlands comes out. This Rito seed is amazing for so many more reasons than I can get into in the video. But I'll tell you this, this isn't just a seed I just came across once. I researched hundreds of seeds to look for things that are interesting and really learn what makes an area interesting to play in. Not just what looks cool, what ticks the dots, but what is actually fun. And here it is. This is what I've learned. The most major lesson is that monsters from different biomes fight each other. That means that even if you're on a high difficulty, you can get a lot of action just by hanging out and watching them fight and luring them into each other's biome. Normally, all the monsters fight you. But if you are on the edge of the plains and the mistlands and the mountains, even the black forest, then the monsters are going to fight each other. And it adds this totally different element to your Valheim base building experience. And now when you get events, you don't have to be so scared because what you're used to is a bunch of enemies coming in and all trying to kill you. But now, because you have a base that you planned out on the edge of a different biome, I can just run away from these goblins. <laughs> now we basically have a guard. And that's what's so awesome about being on the edge of different biomes, because it totally changes your relationship with the monsters. You know, obviously, that death Skeeto did not help me. I don't plan these things, I swear. I just seem to die a hundred times in every video. The more borders with different biomes, particularly high level biomes, the spot has, the more interesting it will be. Another great advantage of building on the borders of different spots is farming. This allows you to make one base that has access to every single crop. For that to happen, you need to have plains and mistlands. You actually need a lot more of the plains biome and you can also use black forest biome, but you won't be able to grow barley or flax. Those things need to be grown in the plains. That's why the plains is one of the best farming spots because you can grow most things there, but you will need a little bit of mistlands. This also has a nice perk of giving some music variability to your base. When you're in the mistlands part, you'll have the mistlands music. And same for the part of your base that's in the plains. I personally love this touch. I feel like it really adds more flavor to your base and makes it feel more unique because it gives a theme, a musical theme, to the different areas of your base. You want to target the exact spot where you can make an octagon or a circle and capture three different biomes. That's your strategy. A Valheim world is absolutely huge though, so how do you go about actually finding these magical spots? That's where Valheim world comes in. And it's why I think this tool is really great, because it can allow you to capture those magic zones that the chance of you finding naturally are, yeah, technically possible. For a no map, no portals run, this is my absolute favorite spot, and building this base has been a blast. Something so special about this spot is that there's this great strip of black forest from the ocean. And I don't know about you, but building in the plains and the mistlands is kind of tough. So you really need to start with these sort of secure areas that aren't that dangerous that you can respawn in should things go amiss. And my oh my, do things go amiss? Now, we've covered that one of the things that makes a really interesting base building endgame experience in Valheim is being close to multiple different biomes. But it's not just that. You need to be near some really deep endgame biomes. Here's a spot, for example, that might look appealing. It's got black forest, plains, mountains, and mistlands. And this is pretty good. Like, you could have an experience here. The problem, though, is that if you really like one of these biomes, 
you're gonna run out of stuff to explore real fast. That's why the next thing to focus on is the size of the end game biomes that are near this magical base spot you're looking for. The end game experience in Valheim isn't about killing the queen. I mean, sure, you can go fight her and kill her and then say you beat the game, but how much fun is that? The true challenge lies in building a base and being able to survive in the hardest biomes while all these monsters try and stop you. But now, you might ask, building an endgame base in the Mistlands or the Plains sounds great, but how do you do that? Because there's constantly monsters trying to kill you and raids and all sorts of gnarly stuff. And a common mistake people make is they try and build a huge extravagant base all at once and then they think they're going to play in it. And that's not how this game works, trust me. If you do that, then you'll burn yourself out, build the base, and then you'll just stop playing. Like, that's what usually happens to people. I'm going to show you how you can actually have fun. See, this is what the spot actually started out like. Obviously, those mist candles weren't there. I just had to place those there so that you guys can actually see. And what I suggest you do is instead of trying to plan some big extravagant place, focus on finding one of these magical spots and make one tiny area that's really safe that monsters cannot get into that you can respawn in. And that's what this little cave is. This little area was where it all began. Me and my buddy came here, brought all of our stuff in no map mode. It was like 20 carts worth of stuff we hold here in two boats. It was awesome. And the glory of doing things this way is that then you can base build, go out and explore, base build, go out and explore. And that's where Valheim really shines. Because if you just build a base, yeah, your base may be so cool and awesome, but what does it matter if no one uses it? It just feels sad. For this base, it started out simple. Just these octagonal walls that you see here. Then we build this kind of tower in the middle of it. But the tower was kind of cramped inside because the stairs to get upside took so much space. So we put in a basement that functions as a storage area and also a full kitchen. The kitchen has access to a fermenting room which the roof was destroyed through a vulnerability that secret brute took advantage of. And usually there's a bunch of chickens in here, but they got killed, so obviously I need to improve my design. Then we added this field for onions and seeds for the chickens and that sort of thing. And other fields for all the other crops we needed. The next upgrade was this forge. And this forge was a blast, because once you fire it up, it just drops the bars onto the ground. And I don't know why, but I just am endlessly amused by this. And what I found in Valheim is if you just build it gets boring. Don't get me wrong, it is really fun, but you need some destruction. There needs to be something working against you, trying to stop you from building. It means that your vulnerabilities are gonna be pointed out. As you can see, the enemies blew up my fermenter room, killed all my chickens, and showed me that I really needed the wall to be taller there. I couldn't just put a roof. They also blew a hole in the side of my building, so now they can get in. And this is the kind of chaos that you get used to. But that's where being on the edge of different biomes comes in. All these raids just end up bringing you resources and chaos and fun. You don't really even need to tame things anymore because they just naturally help defend your turf. As promised, now I'll show you this magical spot that I would absolutely use if I was playing with portals. See, what we have here is a large mountain with a bunch of mistlands. And that might not sound so special. But that's where this Mislin's progression item comes in. This bad boy totally eliminates fall damage and makes you sort of float. You don't fly, but you can definitely get really far if your base just happens to be at the top of this mountain. And there's just something about starting each adventure with being able to jump out of your base and then just fly off into the Mislin's below. Oh, it really is something special. This mountain is located far on the edge of the Rito Seed at negative 57444768. This area features a large mountain and plenty of deep mistlands for you to jump off into and explore. Another great feature of this spot is that it has a great black forest area. This area is perfect for you to start off in and build up your resources so you can move up into the mountain and establish yourself there. 
And not only that, but this island also has a plains, which you could portal to and have a farm here. All of that packaged in an awesome island with lots of different biomes. And this is just one seed. I'm sure that you will be able to find many more of these magical spots where there's multiple biomes near each other. And trust me, you really might want to set that raid setting up because some of the coolest stuff I've ever seen in this game comes from monsters fighting each other. It really is pretty insane the kind of stuff that you come across. And that's it for this video everybody. If you want to support my work, then check out a dedicated Valheim server on Zap Hosting using my link, JP Valheim. You can check it out at the top of the video. That's it for now, and I'll see you next time. Bye!